to our building dedication for the new and fully accredited Heritage High School. Excuse me. Sorry about the little technical difficulty. Um, as I mentioned in our ribbon cutting ceremony in August, today is truly a great day in number one Big Orange Country, and this year is a great year to be a pioneer. My name is Tim Beatty, and it's my honor and pleasure to not only lead and serve as the principal of Heritage High School, but to also serve as your master of ceremonies for tonight's event. On behalf of the faculty, staff, students, I would like to thank Dr. Braybrand, Mr. Copeland, Mr. Thompson, our school board, and all the other companies and individuals who have helped make our dream become a reality. We are very thankful, appreciative, grateful, and excited for the opportunity that our new building presents to educate our children in the 21st century. And even though we have now access, that we now have access to a state-of-the-art facility, the camaraderie, family atmosphere, tradition, innovation, and excellence will continue and be taken to higher heights here in number one Big Orange Country. We are pioneers because we are welcoming, we are encouraging, achieving, responsible, and engaged. This evening, you will hear from our leaders from central office, school board member, alumni, staff, and one of our former principals as we celebrate the dedication of our brand new building. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the celebration in number one Big Orange Country. All right, so I get the pleasure of starting this thing off tonight, and I'm probably the most nervous I've been in a long time. Okay, good evening, everyone. First off, isn't this just a great room to have an event like this? <clears throat> it's warm, it's inviting, and you guys didn't notice it when you sat down, and I didn't notice it until the first time that I heard a meeting in here. These chairs do not squeak. <laughs> the old school, you had to wait till everybody got positioned and before you could talk, so it's really nice to be in this, this wonderful facility. It's nice to walk around this building and to see what this building has become. If you remember one thing about tonight, I hope this is what it will be. This new place is just a building. It was built in the dirt and rose out of the ground over the previous two years. This place is not what makes Heritage High School amazing. What makes Heritage amazing is the atmosphere created by the staff and students every day in this building. That atmosphere has been cultivated for 40 years. The atmosphere that can best be characterized <clears throat> the atmosphere that can best be characterized is the Heritage High School family. Everyone that attends or has attended understands what that means. And during my four, my four short years in Lynchburg, I've had worked closely with this school, and I have learned and to understand what this family means because I experienced it every day. This school has graduated 10,109 students in its existence. Since 1976, students have come to Heritage High School. 1978 was the first graduating class, and in June of 2017, another graduating class will turn their tassels in the new field house. The new field house will see close to 2,000 folks to enjoy that graduation. The new field house will be air conditioned. And we don't know what time graduation's gonna be, but it won't be at 8.30 in the morning to avoid the heat. <laughs> in early 2013, we started down the path of designing this building. And that early work, which was very challenging at times, led us to opening these doors in August, a full year ahead of schedule. For many of you in this room that have been here a lot longer than I, 
It took a while for you to believe that the reality was coming true. After all, a new building for Heritage had been talked about for many years. The funding was always looked for, and finally, the money came through. But even after we broke ground, the building started taking shape. It started coming up out of the ground. There were still those, some of you in the audience, that were like, hmm, are they far enough along? Are we going to make it? I even had one person sitting up here on the stage with me that was kind of counting bricks on the gym to make sure that we were making satisfactory progress. But have no doubt, at times, I was just as concerned because carrying off a project like this is a big undertaking. Projects of this magnitude require an involved and skilled team to drive things through to completion. I'd like to thank everybody that was a part of that team. Many of you in this room are a part of that team, and you may not even realize it. For me, the team is a very large group. It contains that normally expected list of architects and engineers and construction companies and project managers, the folks that, that build the building day to day. But this team also includes the taxpayers, the community members, the Lynchburg City Schools and the city employees, the school board members, the elected officials, the parents, and most importantly, the students. Because yes, we did have students involved in the design of this building. If I was to sit here and name everyone, I would go beyond my allotted time and Tim would probably toss me out the back door. <laughs> but if I sat there and tried to do that, I guarantee you that I would miss somebody that's important. So the second thing I want you to remember is that this was accomplished by a team. It was no one individual, it was no one person. When I talked about this school in the past at Lynchburg College back in the spring, I used this analogy before. People have always heard it takes a village to raise a child. And I assert today that it takes a community that values the importance of education to make a statement like this building. This building makes a statement about how much we value education and how much we believe in our students. This new building is something to be proud of. For the staff that work here and the students that will graduate in the coming years, you are a part of the newest, most advanced high school in Central Virginia. In 1976, James Candler said these words, and they are as significant today as they were then. We propose Heritage High School as a fitting name for the city's newest secondary building. The name shall serve to remind this generation and generations to come that the first responsibility in public education is to see that our democratic way of life is preserved through an informed electorate. This name shall call to mind both the pride and achievements in the past and shall hold forth a challenge for greater progress in the future. It shall provide a continuing reminder to Lynchburg educators and citizens of the obligation which is theirs to mold the future through the education of our youth, to carry on the heritage of free education first established in the city of Lynchburg in 1871 and in the colony of Virginia in 1634. Jim Candler said that when he named this building. That's my opening comments. I'm honored to be up here to be a part of this. Um, it's a great night for Lynchburg. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Copeland, for your opening remarks. At this time, I'd like to ask two members of the class of 1991 here at Heritage High School to, to join me uh, here at the podium. That's Mrs. Beth Coleman, who teaches English here at Heritage High School, and Mrs. Michelle Wiskirchen, who as a Spanish teacher and department chair for foreign language. They're going to assist me with a special presentation. And, uh, Mr. Copeland, if you could please come forward. This wasn't part of the agenda. No, we're ad-libbing a little bit. <laughs> we wanted to take the time to, tonight to recognize Mr. Copeland for his hard work and dedication to helping uh, making this dream come a reality. And so we wanted to award him with two awards today. One is uh, an honorary diploma from Heritage High School. And I know he can't go back in time and go back to high school, but <laughs> this honorary diploma is awarded to Mr. Benjamin Copeland in recognition of outstanding service and commitment to Heritage High School.
And then this last award, if I can get it out and not break it. Uh, is a picture of Mr. Copeland in front of our brand new school. Uh, I don't know who this other guy is in front of him, beside him. But it's in thanks and appreciation for Mr. Copeland from everyone here in number one, Big Orange Country. Thank you. So, we weren't standing in this location when this picture was taken. <laughs> we were standing on Main Street, and this was actually a picture, I think, that ended up in Lynchburg, Lynchburg Living Magazine. John, thank you for photoshopping that in. That looks pretty awesome. It actually looks like we were standing out in front of the school. So, thank you. Um, thank you. I, I'll say too much. So. Wow, what a beautiful day it is in Big Orange Country. What an amazing journey, what a ride, and what a blessing. That old building down the hill meant a lot to many of us. This new building means just as much, if not more. It stands for community, our heritage community, as well as the Lynchburg community. We came together to create a special gift for the children of Lynchburg. We are proud to showcase our new home. We are thankful for those that rallied around us and helped us to make this dream a reality. We are in a state-of-the-art building, the only school in the United States with this amazing technology. We are proud. We are determined to leave a legacy for our students, our own children, and this community. We're starting a new journey, combining our old traditions with the new. It is always a great day in number one Big Orange Country. We look to the future to make more dreams come true. We are pioneers. Here at Heritage, we are innovative, creating new and challenging ways to enhance curriculum and the learning environment. We are transforming young lives and leading them into the millennium with the best technology around and the most wonderful teachers around. We are investing in our rich traditions of excellence and pioneering our way to a strong future. At the end of the day, it is not about the building, but about the people. But my goodness, what a wonderful building. <laughs> we are number one Big Orange Country. Thank you, Ms. Wiskirchen and Ms. Coleman, for your remarks. At this time, we will uh, have a member of the class of 93, you see that's a common theme, and current school board member, Mrs. Jenny Poor, to come up and make a few remarks. You guys make this really easy. I think I personally know every single person uh, sitting in this crowd. Um, so honored to be here, so excited to be here tonight. I just want to thank everybody for making the time to come out and help us celebrate this. And my name is Jenny Poor, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the Lynchburg City School Board. In addition to being a member of the school board, I was also lucky to serve as a member of the Heritage High School Joint Task Force and as a member of the Heritage Design Committee. I am a graduate of the class of 93, and uh, most importantly, I am the mother of members of the Heritage High School classes of 2019, 2024, and 2028. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I've got. Thank you. I think I think I've got almost all the bases covered. I don't teach here. I think that's the one thing I don't have, I, and I think that's why they asked me to speak tonight. So. Um, first, I want to I want to thank all the people who made this gorgeous building possible. I think we've already hit on some of them, but it bears repeating again because it was such a tremendous task taken on by so many people, uh, members of City Council, Mayor Joan Foster, and former Mayor Mike Gillette, all of the school board members who helped shepherd this process from its beginning to us standing here tonight, the dozens and dozens of task force members who so graciously gave of their time and uh, especially including the late Robert Miller, who I know would be so pleased with where we are tonight. 
I, I thank you. Absolutely. It was, it was such a joy to sit with him in those task force meetings. He was a principal when I, when I was a student, and we'd always give a sly wink to each other because we, we knew just how important and how wonderful what we were doing was. So, um, Also, uh, Principal Tim Beattie and the staff of Heritage High School, and of course, uh, our superintendent, Scott Brabrand, and his administration team. Most notably, Ben Copeland, who I want to mention specifically. There's a reason he got that uh, pleasant and special and meaningful um, diploma and picture. And uh, because he's uh, always so careful to avoid the spotlight, I'm going to do it for him. Um, ben Copeland, uh, he took with him a deep seriousness, his responsibility to create an exceptional building. But not only that, it was so lovingly crafted um, that if I didn't know better, I think he'd have sat in Thurman Davis's history classes with us or had his ankles taped by Jimmy Green uh, before a game. Uh, he's one of us, um, and, and he treated the, the crafting of this building like he was one of us, and that was evident from his very first day on the job. So, thank all those people. So, what I, what I most wanted to say tonight is, you know, in, in thinking of, this is a big deal, it's, you know, this is, a, this is a big deal not just for us sitting in this room, but it's a big deal for the community. And, and what I most wanted to say tonight is that this building is a testament to the very best that can happen when an entire community joins together to ensure a better future for its children. As a community, not just heritage people or other side of town people, but as a community, we identified a problem, we came up with solutions to that problem, we figured out a way to pay for it, and we created something grand. Uh, and, and I say this, um, we did this as a partnership between City Council, Lynchburg City Schools, business members, grandparents, homeowners from all over the city, because that's what the task force was. I, I led a subcommittee of the task force, and the people that served with me, they were from everywhere. They didn't necessarily have children that would ever even go to the school, but it was so important to them. And, and we did this all because it was the right thing to do. They wanted to help spend hours and hours doing this because it was the right thing to do. And, and we did it because doing it is the responsibility of every strong and healthy community. That's what strong, healthy communities do. So this is your tax dollars at Works, friends. This is an example of the very best of our collective civic consciousness. Uh, I hope we can all remember how lucky we are to live in a city that stepped up to do the right thing for its future when it mattered the most. So I, I think Coach Storm, I think I saw him. He, he said it at graduation last June. The idea that Heritage High School is the people and not the building. And I, I'm here every afternoon picking up my daughter from play practice. And it's like, uh, and we always look down to the old school. And it's like it's being slowly erased from the landscape. And, and that's really hard to watch. And I know a lot of you feel the same way, too, if it was a special place for you, too. It's hard to watch. Um, and we joke that it would be easier if it, would just, if it were just disappeared, like suddenly. But Ben, ben Copeland, he told me that's not how major building demolition works. Um, <laughs> I asked, though. I asked. I tried. So no, we're going to have to wait for it to be slowly erased. Um, but Coach Storm you know, was right, of course. And, and as Mr. Copeland said earlier, um, that uh, heritage is the people and not the building. The parents and family members and staff and students, they kept heritage a vibrant, thriving, happy place, even during the last years of the old school when, when conditions were far less than ideal for learning. The people who made the absolute most of what they had without complaint, uh, because that's just how we do, uh, how heritage people do. We make the best of it, and that's what we did for a long time. Um, that pride of place that we've always felt as heritage people, that, that little bit of a chip some of us still carry on our shoulder, uh, which maybe now in this space isn't so necessary anymore, uh, that's, that's what it means to be heritage people. Um, and that's what it's meant to all of us. So um, just lastly, whether, whether you walk the old halls, which are now mostly memory, or these new ones where a whole new batch of young people are just now making their marks, we are who we are because we are pioneers. And I don't think there's ever been a time I've been prouder to say that than right now. So thank you all so much. Thanks to my Heritage family for this. Thank you, Mrs. Poor. And at this time, I'd like to bring up our guest speaker for this evening who is, uh, needs no introduction. He's the longest tenured principal uh, here at Heritage High School and really wrote the blueprint of success um, when it came to it, it comes to an academic program and athletics and uh, overall achievement here at Heritage High School, um, someone who has been responsible for hiring a number of 
teachers uh, who are here today and uh, at our at our dedication ceremony. Uh, he hired me as a teacher as an assistant principal, and I'm very thankful uh, for him for that. Um, and someone who, um, you know, obviously I invited him and Dr. Meyer to come to our uh, graduation last year, and I'll let you in on a little secret. The real reason I invited him wasn't to shake hands and kiss babies and to hand out diplomas. The real reason I invited him is because I wanted him to feel the heat of the whole school one last time. <laughs> Uh, without further ado, uh, our guest speaker for today, Dr. Roger Roberts. Thank you, Tim. I think that was a kind way of saying I'm old. <laughs> but, um, this is a wonderful night. Um, I'm glad so many people are here. I had to be the, the privilege of being the principal here for 15 years, from 1990 to 2005. And it was a wonderful time for me. There were so many changes and accomplishments. Um, it just was really a great time. But before I continue, some things you know you just can't say enough. Congratulations to the Heritage family for being fully accredited school. You know, it, it's such a great legacy to be leaving that building and knowing that the last class left that as a fully accredited high school. That's well done. And looking back at the old building, I remember the first day the building was getting ready to open, the weekend before it opened, uh, and it wasn't quite ready. And there were just about every teacher, people from the community carrying furniture into the building so it would be ready. I see somebody shaking their head, they know that. To be ready for the opening day of school on that Monday. And I think it was three, four, five classes were in the field house because the building wasn't ready. And you would just have loved to see that community spirit of people coming out to make sure it was ready to get started. And looking back at the building, and it's good to see Steve here, maintenance worked so hard on that building to make it as good a building as it possibly could be, uh, given some of the conditions. They, um, they worked on the roof, they patched the roof uh, more than once. Um, they cut down the rusting steel beams from the solar design of this building, but they forgot to put the solar panels on they were never installed because gas prices went down. Um, and as, I, I don't know if y'all know this, from best I can recollect, this building was modeled after a solar building in Texas. And as best I can remember, Texas didn't have a lot of snow. And we had a number of issues with snow when it uh, caused some of the leaks. And I know people, you guys in particular, will miss the steps from level one to level five. <laughs> I would joke with everyone that that was part of our wellness program. <laughs> and I think that's why so many of our athletes and athletic teams were so good because they've been climbing these steps about six or seven times a day. But, and other people said the same thing, and this is so true. The building is not what made number one Big Orange country. It was the staff, the students, the faculty, the community, and the parents. Um, the staff was so very caring and always have been about their students. And I want, this story sticks out in my mind as much as any um, as a testimony to the, to the faculty here and the things they would do for students. One group of teachers became aware of a student that was uh, I think probably when it's in his junior year, um, very academically um, inclined, a really good student. And I think uh, somebody took him home one day and went into his house and they found out that he had no electricity and in his bedroom, which he shared, uh, you could look up in the ceiling and see the sky. And that was kind of the situation he was in. But this group of teachers, uh, one in particularly, with the parents' permission, took him into their house and spent the rest of his junior year and all of his senior year through graduation. 
He entered University of Virginia and graduated on time. That's the kind of people that are at the school. I've seen so many of them do things um, for our students. They purchase clothes, food, school supplies uh, for their students. They stayed after school many, many hours, helping them become better academically. This is the heritage legacy that not only was in the old building, but will only continue to grow in the new building. Schools will have challenges, but the heritage staff goes above and beyond to make their students successful, whether it's in the classroom, on the athletic field, co-curricular activities, or through great fine arts programs and career tech programs. I would also like to recognize the principals that were here. Uh, Jim Swisher and Whit Clark, I saw here. Yes, yes. They got this school off to such a good start, and it was such a sense of community here. And they set, they set the model for everybody to follow. Um, after I left, uh, Robert Miller became the principal here. He was a great man, great educator, a great friend, and to this day, I still miss him. Mark Meyer, who's here, um, <laughs> we, we knew we had a good person. He started as a teacher assistant only because we didn't have a teaching position. So as soon as we had a teaching position, we hired him. And he was a great teacher and a coach and the assistant principal, principal also worked in the central office, and now is superintendent of Mont in Montgomery County. So very proud of him. And Tim Beatty, the man in charge now. <laughs> and everybody knows what a great job he has done and is doing. Um, I feel privileged to have hired and worked with the last three men. Of course, with me and the principals, the last three principals I mentioned, I should remind everyone of who actually ran the school for all of us. That was Jackie Hoffman, our secretary. <laughs> thanks, thanks for all that you did. And also, I, and he's here tonight too, I want to recognize Mark Storm, who without question, was the best athletic director in the state, if not in the country, as well as he was, he was a great teacher and coach as well. Um, and he just retired after 40, 60 years, something like that here. Um, but welcome to the land of retired, although I think he's still doing some work here. But just about all of his years were at Heritage High School, and he certainly left his mark here. There's so many people in the Heritage family that have contributed to its legacy and successes. It, as others have said, they're just too numerous to mention. But Heritage High School has a great new building, and thanks to all that made this happen, those people in the city, the school administration, and I too would like to particularly thank Ben Copeland, who watched over the proper construction of this building to make sure things were done right the first time so you wouldn't have to go back and redo things. Um, and by the way, um, Ben, we did rebury that time capsule. <laughs> In case anyone re read that story, um, we did rebury that time capsule. Somebody stole it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Ben delivered this building ready to go and on time. So congratulations, Ben. <laughs> heritage High School has, has arrived. It has its own heritage now and legacy. So it gives me great pleasure to say it one more time. Have a great night in number one, Big Orange Country. At this time, the dedication of the building will be done by our very own superintendent of Lynchburg City Schools, Dr. Scott Braybrand.
Good evening, everybody. I want to thank all of the folks that have come out, Heritage High School students, orchestra, you did an amazing job with the national anthem. Let's give them a big round of applause. The ROTC young folks, let's give them a round of applause. I think they may have left. I know we have several staff members here. We have other students here. We have alumni here. We have members of the community here. I want to thank you all for being here. Really, this dedication is far more than about celebrating a new building. Part of tonight really has been, I didn't know if you knew this, Ben, this was going to be uh, a day in your life uh, to celebrate. But the truth is, part of leadership is hiring great people and getting out of the way and letting them run with their vision. And Ben, you've dedicated your last four years to making sure this building was done on time and under budget. And we are grateful as a community for everything you've done. I know Jenny Poor also mentioned it already, but I do feel I want to have a moment to let all current and former city council members and current and former school board members and all of the task force members on the Heritage High School task force just to stand and be recognized for the time and effort that you made. Please stand and be recognized by this audience for all that you've done. It really is more than about the dedication tonight. It really is, as some have said, about the thousands, over 10,000, I hadn't done the count, of student lives that have been transformed on this very property, in classrooms and outside of classrooms, on the playing fields, in the theater, in the auditorium, in the library and band rooms. And I have to tell you, one of the things that I know in my first Really, I think it was in my first week here in Lynchburg. I went to visit every school and I came here to Heritage and I met Mark Meyer, the principal. He said, can I just take you around for a minute? And he was proud to show off his programs and his faculty. And then at the very end of the tour, he pulled me down to the, the, the theater area and said, can I, can I just have some new carpet Dr. Brabrand, can I just get these three or four um, seats repaired? And I have to be honest, in my first week or first month here, my, my, my heart sank a little bit. Why did we ever allow a high school facility to get to that condition? But I have to tell you that this community was in the middle of responding. It did respond, and we need to celebrate Look, Mark, at the, uh, the, 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 the theater program that we have now in the facility. So I hope you think we completed your request just four years late. It's not just about the students, and we got to uh, hear tales of all the things that uh, they've done and seen some of our own students, but it's also not just about thousands of kids but hundreds of faculty. And sometimes, you know, it's the students leave, the students come and go, but the faculty remains. And one of the most amazing things to me here about Heritage High School, the faculty does remain. They don't leave. Folks don't leave here. Folks even do retire after 40 years, and, and Mark Storm's still here as much now as he was when he was on the payroll full time. People don't leave. And if they do formally leave, they stay informally connected in a way that I have never seen in any school anywhere in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We have had faculty members here who've dedicated their entire life to Heritage High School. They've been here as a student, then they've come back to work as a member of faculty. Even those that left have never forgotten the legacy that their Heritage experience gave them and made them such a unique and special person. You know, the first heritage was built and was dedicated in difficult times, in contentious times. Annexation was taking place, 
and there were mixed feelings about the new school that was being built on the side of the hill. But Heritage High School persisted. They truly were pioneers. And it's not just a great reference to ancestors who really formed and became a part of the Virginia Piedmont decades and actually centuries ago, but it's about the quality of people who four decades ago devoted their life to this land, to this area around public education for Lynchburg. The new heritage is still really built and formed in challenging times. We still see a lot going on in public education in Virginia in terms of fully funding our programs. We love the fact that the city stepped up, but we need to see more support from our state to support every community in Virginia, not just a few districts with all the resources and all the support, but every school district, district and certainly those that have significant numbers of children who face economic disadvantages. The true democratic way of life that Jim Candler was talking about, starts with everybody getting an equal shot, a fair shot at education, to be able to do anything that they want to do. I know that the pioneering spirit is going to continue to live in this new Heritage High School, and it's going to continue with the mission that we've created here in Lynchburg City Schools, every child by name and by need to graduation. And Roger Roberts was telling a story that really, that that was happening long before it became a phrase at Heritage High School. I know that the words that we say today will likely be forgotten. Even maybe these, these uh, dedication ceremony pamphlets will be forgotten, um, especially if they're buried in a time capsule. They, they may never be found. The class of 79 walked in as I was holding the door and said, we need to find this, this something's going on. Dr. Brabrand, you, your job is in jeopardy if you can't find that time capsule. But they're on it. Some things may be forgotten, but the hopes, the dreams, the struggles, the triumphs, the pioneering spirit of humanity that is expressed inside this building by the students and the staff and the parents and this entire community, these things will continue, continue to endure forever. So let us tonight formally dedicate the new Heritage High School so that everyone who walks the sacred ground every day can have their hopes and their dreams go beyond what anyone would imagine in this country and in number one big orange country. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Crystal Haley, who is going to be a member of the class of 2018, to lead us in the singing of the Heritage High School alma mater. concludes the building dedication ceremony here at Heritage High School and before I close I'd like to thank and acknowledge my administrative team uh, if you guys could please stand Mrs. Fowler our assistant social principal Mr. Prophet and assistant principal Ms. Liscombe thank you all for a job well done in addition to, to Ms. Hoffman these folks help hold it down when, whenever I'm out of the building so I thank, thank them for their hard work and service to Heritage High School. Thank you all so much for coming out to our building dedication ceremony this evening. Uh, without all of you, this would not be possible. And we just thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, we have refreshments prepared for our outstanding culinary arts program 
uh, for you here at Heritage High School. And before we close, one last time, we've got to do our uh, number one big orange country. So as I close, thank you for coming out and have a great day in number one big orange country. Thank you so much. Thank you.